E Hawaii moko kia ve kaya kala e puka mai la e ai la o mau ino hono bi ina ni nui e kama kaula na no e hale akala puka mai la kiki kia kana loa 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 kala i hano hano kia le i taiji hiki a kola no la na i kaula la au kua e la kia loho pehe u ike kapa mama loka i mama loka i la i tvule o o E o o aho o ke o ne o kaku e wa kui kui wale o kaali tāla ni hāli e kana ni mā kawa e o mano o kala ni pō mano o mano o ke o ni a ono hiri. Pili mai lao ni i hau ka aina ka hele la ni ta aina i u hi atu pū pū e. A makula ni nuka na o na ka mole o le we hua mā le hua kala e na pō ana e. Aloha e, aloha e, aloha e, nā nā tu puna nā ta pai aina Hawaii a kea. Aloha e, aloha kākou. Just to reminisce, uh, when I did that one kahea was when Mauna Kea was being attacked. And I made the kahe out there to summon a lot of the spiritual warriors because we had aggravations that was going on throughout the South Pacific that our mountain was being, how would you say? Attacked. Attacked. <laughs> yes. Uh, first of all, before I start, I'd like to introduce my lovely wife, Uilani Kapu. I tell everybody I wear the pants in this family. But she get the belt. So if my pants fall down, it's her fault. Get them one size smaller. <laughs> so uh, first of all, before I start um, to share why we do what we do, I want to thank a lot of people out there, especially uh, the people that I met right here, uh, Kalahui Foundation, Mahalo no Kako, uh, Uncle Black Ho'ohuli over there in the corner, he has been my mentor for many years. The places that we've been to, to Aotearoa, the different parts of Kohawai Pai Aina. And I've always been a, a student of the kupuna of this town, especially during the times of Kalahui, Hawaii. Kalahui, Hawaii, this was the place that gave birth to that Kalahui, Hawaii, and it taught me a lot on how we need to go forward and how we need to represent ourselves as Kanaka Maoli throughout the Pai Aina. And I've always kept that within my heart. I've never uh, have been left astray because I knew that that importance of that was based upon our character and identity as Kanaka Maoli. So there's many other people that I want to thank so much on the many donations that have come forward. And the list is so long, man, I don't even know where to start. Especially all of you. I know that you have dug within your heart and everything that you've done because our town is no longer there. Our town is gone. So we took an immediate action to what needed to be done. And we've, me and my wife is kind of like, you know what, we're not going to have these kind of things hold us down because if we do, then nothing is going to be done. Yo. So we're in Holomoa. We got together. It took us some days to get back to town because we got, got kind of locked out. And we had the urgency in, within ourselves to make sure that we needed to get back to the town because we needed to basically see what had happened. And it's sad that the day we went back, that town was very dark. Town was very lonely. And I did on Kahel, when me and my wife uh, spent the night up on a bypass and all we saw was darkness. There wasn't a light that we were common to seeing when we live in Lahaina. I live in Kaoala Valley, that's above Lahaina town. And it's a very lonesome and agitated place now. But in hopes that 
because we persevere and we go forward and do the things that we need to do that is necessary, we know that we can rekindle that flame within the people that are agitated. We have people that are going through trauma. This is a reality. We started the hub in so many places because we knew that we need to cater to the displaced. The many places that we went, we went to Walgreens to try to get people over there together. Walgreens was, was on place that was making me sick because of the respiratory that I was dealing with. So we decided to move from Walgreens to Kaunapali, Sheraton Kaunapali Beach Hotel. And that's where we're at still today. And mahalo to Walgreens because we made allies through Walgreens. Every place we went, we made allies. And now we're at the Kaunapali Beach and now starting to realize that we are catering to all the displaced families that are in five hotels in Kaunapali Beach. Royal Lahaina, over 400 displaced families. Sheraton Hotel, 200. Kaunapali Beach Hotel, 250. Weston, 300. The Hyatt, another 500 displaced families. So our hub caters to not just the displaced Ohana, but people that are affiliated with the Big Five, um, Local Five Union, and um, RLWU. Then also a lot of the organizations that support us, Stigwadoas, the Longshoremen, Pasha, that we are no longer, we are at a point that where we're, we're untouchable on the resources that we are getting because we need to cater to over 2,000 displaced Hawaiians and local communities, Filipinos, of all races of all races. We catering to everybody. We deal with the trauma. We help them cope. Help them realize that we all need to come together as one because now is the time that we need to rise up. And now is the time that we need to see and put our differences aside and come together as one so we can fix the many problems that we are dealing with today. Lahaina is known as the capital of the kingdom. To us, Lahaina still is the capital of the kingdom. There's still hope within this Aina. Still hope within this place. And it's within the bosoms of the people that live there. Even the Nakanaka. When I look at the Nakanaka, I tell them that you are subjects to the crown. You have a place in our society. Don't let the denomination separate us. We can help each other. We can cater to each other. Like how we're catering to the multitudes of people of what we're doing now. Lahaina has a very long story to tell in its pre-contact time. So we took it on our responsibility to make sure that we cater to all the Kanaka of our place and all the many families throughout the world to use us as an example that in order for us to go forward we need to set aside our differences and come together as one and I pray that Akua gives us that guiding light to make sure that we can stay the course and we can survive and we can deal with the trials and tribulations that we face we are facing with a lot of kepalo, a lot of people who are eager to pray on the weak. The reality that we face with, we have investors that come from all over different parts of this continent praying on the people because there is less hope for them. So, there's this mo'olelo, this song that was written in 1863 by, his name was P.H. Kekuaiwa. And the song is called Eho'i Kanami. 
i moko ula. May the glory return to moko ula. And I'm going to sing this for you guys right now. So, our cultural center, Naikani of Maui Culture and Research Center, no longer stands. The many artifacts, the many documents, the library that we held was to help educate a lot of people about our past. I had documents that were signed by Kamehameha III, Kamehameha V. I had rare maps, and that was a place for the people to come and learn a little bit of, about our past and how we can go forward in looking at land commission awards and royal patents. That was my forte. Giving our people hope that the glory can return. We just got to make it an effort to do what we need to do because our kupuna, kabakahiko, Set aside these things for our benefit, our future generations today. Nothing will change. It's just that we're dealing with um, we're dealing with people that are eager to teach us to forget about the past. But we we're steadfast. So I always tell everybody, you know, when we're dealing with water situation, we're dealing with um, global change, climate change, ivi kupuna, desecration of those kinds of things, a lot of stuff we're dealing with. And I always remind people that I'd rather die on my feet than on my knees. Because if there's not one person that would hold the torch to make sure that we guide our mo'oponas, our next generation on the path we need to go, then we may as well lie down and give up. But I will not. I will not lie down. I will not give up. So this song is for you. And it's an old, it was an old prayer that was written by P.H. Kikawai when it goes like this. Hey, 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 hey. A 
i naka i noa i kala ila no na no ano e i noa la i e e i e e e e i e e i noa no ma noa no. May the glory return to Mokoula. And if anybody knows where Mokoula is, that is one of the properties that we care for too. Not just Naikani or Maui Culture Center, but in the middle of a baseball field was an island where Keopulani, the sacred chief, is, resided and had her children, Niholiho, Kawikeuli, and nahi ena ena. They are now at rest in Waiola and has always been there till today. Waiola is no longer here. Waiola is burnt, it's gone. A lot of 90% of the town of the historic properties are no longer there. So we took action. Now, not just a repository to feed the 2,000 people, but we are also Naikani or Maui, the hazmat cultural monitors to make sure that the federal government walks very quietly in our town. We have 25 cultural monitors, and we have 25 more soon to be certified because it's our responsibility to care for not just the people of that town, but for the mea makamai of all the historic properties and all our kane and wahini, the service cultural monitors, are lineal descendants to that area. My son, Ikaika Kamakani Okalani Kapu, is the head archaeologist leading the cultural monitors. I'm just the big papa. But at the same time, we have a team, a very good team. One of those team is with us today. Her name is Christina Lizzie. Stand up, Christina, say hi. <clears throat> Christina Lizzie is our attorney. Then we have also other people that are technical kako'o for us as well. Her name is Faye McFarling. She's back home. Then we also have our support team that come, came from here actually <clears throat> to help us Auntie is Auntie and Uncle Kavika and Noi Lopes. And their Ohana. Where are they? And their Ohana. And their families, their granddaughters and everything, they help us um, operate the dispense, uh, distribution of food, water, resources. And also another individual that came all of a sudden with this truck, looked like the, the, the zombie truck. Andre. Brother Andre Perez and Camille. Say hi guys, don't hide over there. Okay. Helping us kind of get things together so we can service the multitude of people. And the many people that come, Yalani Sonora Pali, uh, Randa, Gina. Gina right in the front over here. Uh, Everybody. Kauko, uh, and Steven, Everybody. Corey, never realized this guy was affiliated with the kind, um, the unions. But I think it's a good thing because understanding and knowing ILW and um, Local 5, a lot of those people that work for ILW and, and Local 5, they're in the hotels. So coordinating with them, trying to have, have them come out to us so we can 
find out what their needs are. Our town is on the verge of disappearing. No. We're not going to allow that to happen. No. You know, a lot of the families are afraid that despite they don't have any homes, they still got to pay their mortgage or else they're going to get foreclosed. These are the kind of real things that we're dealing with. How do we help alleviate those, those traumas, those pain and, and things like that? And all we do is sometimes when we see them, all they need is on hug. And we are there to provide that for them. But getting with the people up on the top to say that, you know what? E iho ano luna, e pi ano lalo, e hui ano namoku, e ku ano kapaya. Enough already. It should be a bottom to top management system, never a top to bottom. Never a top to bottom. Why? Because we are the host culture. We know, we understand what needs to be done for the benefit of our future generations. Many times already, we told them before that these things were going to happen. This is the fourth time when it happened to us. In 2018, the fire went in the opposite direction to Kaula and burned all my family homes. 21 homes in that town burned. And we approached the county and the state and said, this is going to happen, that we need to get together, we need to talk, we need to discuss matters on how we need to abate these properties to make sure that this doesn't happen again. It's too late. It happened. So who are we going to hold accountable? Ourselves. But Keakua, Keakua knows. Keakua knows what we need to do. We need to peel it so we can have that bottom to top discussion on how we need to be at the table, on how we need to see. And I see possible things that may affect this town as well, especially for Y and I. Same thing, same issue. The west side of Lahaina Komohana, the west side of Y and I Komohana, same. So I urge all of you, to get with your lawmakers and tell them we need to abate these properties now or else it's going to happen here too. These developers are taking too much water. This water should be in its natural state. Now that everything is burnt, now the water is returning. Ola Ikawai. Ola Ikawai. Yo. So mahalo no kako, everybody. I hope I have infected you with our virus. Because it's very important. If we don't stand for what is right now, especially for this Komohana side of this island, I don't want to see this thing happen to, to this part. And I hope that you lead us out there, whoever you are, your associations, your hui's, your lawmakers, everybody, state, senate, county council, now is the time. May Lahaina serve as an example so we don't ha have that happen to any place else in Hawaii. Any place else in Hawaii. I pray to Akua for the safety of the people that are suffering now. And I pray for all of us that we find it within our heart to pili, to come together. We are drained, but we are steadfast. We will continue. And the funny thing is that the, the private golf course, they say, how long do you think you guys going to be here? And I said, at, at, at its shortest, probably make, maybe four months. At its longest, maybe four to six years. So, and another thing, I, I just want to put some humility in my discussion because there's a lot of worry, but, you know, sometimes I even told um, the county council, I told them, 
Sometimes it's good to occupy than to ask. Because now we're there, now they see the light of why we are there, that we are giving provisions that came from all of you. This is a community hub. All the provision that we get throughout the state of Hawaii comes from all these very places. Molokai, Lanai, Kaula. As I opened up in my, my pule to summon these islands together because now is the time. Now is the time we need to come together and we need to feed because when we got burned out, the community came to our aid. Now the community needs help. We are now coming to this. And we're not going to stop. We're going to be here. And last thing I wanted to say, <clears throat> there was mention saying that um, a certain individual saying that they're speaking with uh, Keomoko Kapuo about, you know, the development and uh, what affordable homes and all these kinds of That's a lie. Okay? Because I would never, never, ever turn my back on this Pai Aino and the people of Hawaii. Mahalo no kako. Aloha. Come on, everybody. Show the kapu some love, everybody. Show the haina love. Mahalo nui, brother. And that song, we got to learn that song. It's so beautiful. So my cousin Lemana Galdera and, and brother Joe Aquino, you know like how we get this sign for the Mauna? We get one for Lahaina Strong. We get the left right here and the fist. That's Lahaina Strong, everybody. This is Lahaina Strong. <laughs> Pai no Maui Nui Aka Makika Mala Aina Hoi Ka Lama Kua Ho Mala Malama Malama Ia Ka Ike Kupuna Ka Po Kua Ewa Keo Kua Ki Ka Naka Kali Kukui Ewa Eko E Noa Na Kua Kaui Ka Mehe O Na Kupuna Ma Ama Ama Kukui Ulu A E Ka Ike O Loko Ulu Ma Hie Hie Mai Kahi Pai A Kahi Pai A Maui Nui Ka Hea Ho I Mai Uka I Kai Ewa Hava I Pai Aina E Ho O Pa Ai ka wai ki ala kupuna pā nahe nahe mai laka maka niki kai mali e. Mō ane mai ki ana ona ona kai lei aloha. E lei aloha noia aloha e.